Welcome to this extremely chill vlog on robotics on this channel. Usually this channel is about extremely technical stuff in robotics and we usually talk about hands-on stuff in ROS and robotics and general concepts in robotics. But deviating from that, this vlog is about me chilling and talking about my experiences in robotics, how I see learning in robotics, a couple of questions from you guys, how I see this channel as a creative outlet for me and what is it that we're going to do going forward. Speaking of which, I'm going to mix it up a little more. I'm going to use my original background music in this video. Just wait for a minute. Okay, so this is actually my original guitar improvisation. I used this guitar for the same. It is on my other channel. So if you're curious about what this guitar improvisation is, it is on my other channel. The link is in the description below, but this is what I wanted to do for fun. Now let's get into the main things. First up, I want to talk about my experiences in robotics in general. I did not have a linear path in robotics to be honest, so it wasn't the case that I graduated and I started working in robotics and I'm here. For people who don't know me, I'm all about startup robotics. But when I graduated in 2016 as an electronics engineer, I experimented a lot with different technical domains, even some non-technical domains to be honest. And that was quite a lot of fun. I started as a hardware engineer, so I was making PCBs, circuit designs and all of that stuff. And because of my internships in places like NVIDIA, yeah, I was also working in C++ software design in the past. I just mixed all of them at some point and it just led me to robotics. But the thing is, I also was not sure about robotics or anything for that matter for my career when I graduated. So I decided that I'm going to spend a couple of years figuring out what I wanted to do when it comes to engineering because without that, I would not do it with a lot of joy, which is something I do right now. Like all of this is super fun for me. So starting off as a hardware engineer in a startup, I learned quite a bit about hardware engineering, PCB designing, circuit designing, but I also wanted to see what academia and MNCs are all about. So I went to academia after a while and I saw what academia is all about. That didn't work for me. Academia is great for people, but it just doesn't work for me. I'm not a person for academia. And then I came back from academia and then I started working in a multinational corporation. So that was the stint, which taught me a lot about scalability, how to make good architectures. And it was all usually C++. So I was working at the interface of hardware and software, but I was a software engineer, so to speak there. But I was actually modeling hardware systems and software. So system C and C++. That was quite nice. But after experiencing startups, academia and MNCs, I just realized that startups is what I want to work in. And that led me to starting my masters. And right now I'm working in Germany in startup robotics. So that is amazing for me right now. But it took a while for me to realize that I want to work in startups and in robotics. Because as I said before, I started off as a hardware engineer, did software engineering as well. And in my free time, I was experimenting a lot with robotics. I was doing a lot of courses in parallel to figure out that, okay, this is what I want to do in robotics. And even in robotics, you have a couple of domains, right? Robotics is one of the most multidisciplinary domain there is. So you have to figure out what you want to do even within that. So for me, I work with electronics and software. Right now, my time is 80% software, 20% electronics. But actually, you can't put yourself in a box. For me, the thing is, whenever I'm working on a product, whatever needs to be done for the product, I do it. I am not a mechanical engineer guy, so that is not my forte. So I don't spend a lot of time with mechanical engineering, quite less to be honest. But I mean, if need be, to build the product, whatever needs to be done has to be done. So this was my experience in the gist because sometimes these questions come up and I have written blogs on this already, but this is me talking about it in this super chill blog. Now, the next thing I want to casually talk about is how I see learning in robotics. I absolutely believe in learning through projects and not courses after courses after courses. That is something I have always done. To be honest, I have never attended classes even when I was doing my bachelor's, in my master's, I was skipping a lot of classes because I am not a person who learns through just coursework. I like to build and learn in parallel. And I honestly think that is the best way to learn because that is where you learn the most and the pace is the best it can be. When you're doing courses and courses and courses, the problem is you don't know if this actually maps to something. For instance, even when I was working as a hardware and software engineer and I did not enter robotics professionally, uh, I actually still applied to a couple of companies in the robotics domain, hoping that I'll get an interview. I applied to 50 or 60 of them back then with no proper knowledge of robotics back then. Uh, but uh, two of them gave me an interview. These interviews are pretty short. In fact, one of them lasted for 30 seconds. 
that was because i did not have proper background then but that was the way for me to figure out what the learning process should be what tools i should learn what technical stack i should focus on i can do courses and courses and courses that's good for my ego but to look at what the domain actually needs what the industry needs you have to look at what people are actually wanting from you so because of these interviews i actually got to know what i have to work on in one of the interviews which lasted 30 seconds i actually asked the guy about the technical stack i need to learn and the guy was nice and he told me that we are looking for someone who knows this 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 and this and then i started learning that properly that was the reason my learning was very focused back then and uh, that led to a bunch of things and i think i am here now because of those interviews so my point is focus learning based on what the industry wants and project based learning is the best way to go about it now as much as people would like there is no playbook because robotics engineering is a different ball game it is not just software engineering just hardware engineering so in that case i think once you start projects based on that you pick up tools as and when you need them i honestly find the process of learning tools just for the sake of learning tools extremely boring i usually pick up problem statements and then i get tools or i learn tools based on what that problem statement demands so the problem statement is my guiding light not the tools not courses nothing else so i would say having a decent base of general technical knowledge in robotics is enough for you to start working on problem statements and then you build up everything you need based on what problem statement says and if you observe carefully this channel is also a way for me to learn more because it is easy for me to develop something in isolation and say that okay it is working for instance whatever i'm working on in ros2 now and later for this channel is because i want to make videos to help people out which also means it will help me because when you're making a video there are so many nuances you have to know anything i show in a video i have to understand it line by line because how would i be able to explain it without knowing everything line by line so apart from my professional job which i absolutely love and i learn a lot there this channel is also a guiding light for me making videos interacting with people knowing the problems people are facing also makes me learn more and dig deeper so no matter what technical blog or channel you're looking at I am a hundred percent certain that the person is also learning a lot because there is always two-way communication. There is also feedback from you guys or like from whoever is watching the video, and that also benefits a lot because I have to spend a significant chunk of time researching everything. There's a lot of stuff which will work when I'm building it, but to showcase that is also a task in itself. It is a great task, and I absolutely enjoy doing it. But because of all that research in the background. I actually learn a lot and that brings me to my next point. I want this channel to always be about two way communication because it is about all of us learning together. I put out everything I can to help the community and I know that the community responds in such a brilliant manner. I've had such amazing conversations with people. So the best part about this channel is having two way communication. As long as we can talk about anything robotics as long as you can learn from the channel and I can learn from you guys, it is amazing. That's all I want because I mean for me in the end i am having fun with this channel that's my point learning and fun is all i want and of course whatever experience i have based on that i will always put content out and whoever is watching this video right now because it's been a couple of minutes in this video already and if you're here i can safely assume that we are on the same page when it comes to learning robotics two way communication and all of that so i just want this communication channel to always be open and hence i also have this rule that if anyone messages i always respond because it's always about two way communication and moving ahead together in this domain this brings me to my next point this channel is also about like my creative outlet because for me every video is like a blank canvas i just want to see what i can do with a new video and as and when we progress i think i'm just going to start mixing it up a little more it will always be about technical stuff in robotics it will always be hands on so i just want to provide a lot of value to the community and i know that in return i will also gain a lot of value because i've already seen that happening but i love playing with these things making stuff creative like putting my background music in this video right it's just a lot of fun so that is what this channel is about now what do i plan to do moving forward well i'll just continue making videos and then right now i'm focusing a lot on ros2 but let's see what happens since it is all about two way communication i will plan according to what we all need in general and let's see what happens as long as this channel is fun for all of us 
I think we are doing a good job there. So that's all I wanted to say. I also got a couple of questions when I put out this post on the community tab on YouTube saying that hey I'm making a chill robotics video. So I think Avi and Antonio responded and thank you so much guys. I mean if you responded then it means that what I'm doing is not going into the ether. So someone is watching it, someone is responding. As long as that's happening, I am super happy about it. Now talking about the two questions I got which I was super happy about. The first one is by Antonio where he says uh If you want to talk about a time you feel that something that is if you feel it's a lesson learned worth sharing. Um so I don't know how to get super technical here because uh, it's it's slightly philosophical but I just think that when it comes to a career the word uh, failure is extremely misplaced because if you try to do something in your career and it doesn't work out why is it a failure? It's just some step you took and it just didn't work out. That's it. You move on and do something else. failure would just mean that you cannot do it for the rest of your life keep trying it just works out i mean for for instance i did not know anything about robotics when i started applying for jobs in robotics uh but i got to know about what i need to learn and that's that's how it is and now it's fine right so i mean i cannot say that i failed back then and when i i'm working in the field right now i succeeded because it just doesn't make sense that was one step for me uh i don't know if you want me to talk about some technical stuff here but uh, i just want to say that when it comes to failure i just look at it in a very different light um it's just that uh, when i was trying to figure out my way and trying to see if robotics works for me or any other career works for me it was not a straight path as i said it was zigzag zigzag i fig- i tried a lot of stuff and then this just worked out so if someone looked at my trajectory for the first 5 or 6 months or 10 months or even 2 years to be honest uh, when i graduated it wasn't making sense to a lot of people but i just wanted to figure this out and i wanted to see what works for me and once i figured out that robotics works for me i spent a lot of time learning robotics although my job was not in robotics back then this again did not make sense to a lot of people but i mean i just knew that this is what i want to do for a living so i have to figure it out i don't think it's a big deal but uh to a lot of people it just didn't seem like the right choice now they are super happy i just <laughs> don't know why uh now they're like oh you love what you do of course i love what i do i mean i spent 3 years figuring this out so i will love what i do and apart from that i think it's just a learning experience in your career right uh but if you actually had a different question in mind and i did not understand your question correctly please do comment and i'm sorry about it uh i will try my best to answer that question okay talking about the next question which is by avi i've already had conversations with avi he's a great guy he asked about the balance of classical versus modern robotics practices uh in 2022 uh for instance boston dynamics relies heavily on classical approaches and for them ai is just another tool in their tool belt on the other hand if uh, i'm not mistaken tesla robot will be heavily driven by ai influence so if i understand correctly it's about using classical approaches which are proven as long as they work versus uh, asking ai like a black box to just do whatever it can to just solve your problem um I think this is very subjective and based on what I know and to the depths of my ignorance of course uh I am a proponent of using uh, classical approaches more than AI when you can I don't think AI should be used everywhere so my idea is use machine learning when it is actually needed not just because you want to use it uh a lot of stuff is also solved right like like navigation uh for the industry navigation in mobile robotics is not an unsolved problem so to speak uh s- let's not talk about like specific cases but in general uh you can do navigation without uh ai there are ways where you can do it using reinforcement learning and a lot of companies at least bigger companies and academia is researching on that uh but since it is a problem you can in general tackle without using ai i definitely would go that way also i was listening to this podcast the other day about computer vision and uh, there one of the guys said that uh, using ai as a black box in autonomous vehicles leads to policy problems because uh, to have autonomous vehicles on the streets the policy says you need something which you can actually describe and you can actually debug but ai can become a black box so this is the case for uh, end to end ai based uh, autonomous driving which a couple of companies did try and i think most of them just did away with it 
uh, so that is also a problem policy wise but uh, at least based on my experiences up until now i would not go that route but i mean let's see what the future holds so yeah these were the two questions i got and i was super happy about these two questions i think this is what i wanted to talk about in this chill vlog i just wanted to free wheel and not have any super technical discussions in this vlog because talking is also super nice also also if you like this background music do check out the video where it comes from so i made this guitar improvisation using a backing track i think last year because with this video if i think about it i'm actually colliding everything i do robotics on one side uh and then music on the other side so i just mixed it up and it was a lot of fun for me uh please check out that video if you want i think i'll keep making these chill videos once in a while based on how i feel if i want to talk about something more if there's anything we should talk about together and uh, whenever i do that i'll probably use my own background music okay so i think that's all there is for this video i hope you had a good time or at least this video was interesting to some of you even if it's interesting to one person i think i'm happy because i had a lot of fun making this video so thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video bye bye